Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a super simple and very efficient Minecraft Bedrock Kelp Bone Meal Farm that works with Zero Take. This farm is super LP and will give you 18 stacks of bone meal an hour. Also, it is very cheap, everything you're gonna need for this farm is in this chest. You can stop now and make a screenshot if you want to. <coughs> this farm is not that big as you can see, but it has to be in one chunk. So you can't build it on a chunk border, this would break the farm itself. And if you don't know how to find chunk borders and chunks itself, then you can go to the link in the video description there, I have a very simple tutorial on how to find chunk borders. The first thing we want to do is to build a redstone clock for our mechanism. You want to do this at one end of the chunk so that you have enough space to build the whole farm. So in this case I go about one, two, three blocks away and there I want to break one block and one more right here with one block in between. Then you want to go around and place a redstone torch in this one, you want to make sure that it is on the side of the block and then place redstone dust right here. Then you want to place a redstone repeater in between, something like this. And now you want to place one block on top of the torch and one on top of the redstone dust. And as you can see, this will create a redstone clock. You want to place a lever right here and flick it once so that the signal is steady and you turned the redstone clock off. And then what you want to do is to place one, two, three, four redstone dust like this. Now you want to take your two sticky pistons and place them in these two positions. You want to make sure that they connect to the redstone clock and extend. And then you want to break the two blocks that are below the piston arm and it should look something like this. Now take some sand, place two blocks in front of the pistons and two more on top of these piston arms. And now go on top of the sand blocks, place two layers of blocks on top of the sticky pistons and two pistons facing this side. These will be the two pistons that harvest all of our kelp to get all the bone meal. Now we want to place our collection system for the whole farm. To do this, dig out one, two, three, four blocks at the side of the lever. This should look like this. Then place a double chest in the front part and two hoppers facing the chest in the back part. You will have to sneak for this. As you can see, both of these hoppers will link towards the chest. Then what you want to do is to place your composters on top of the hoppers and then go on top of the composters, place two more hoppers right here and two more facing the already placed hoppers. Now you should have placed six hoppers and all of them should be linking towards the chest. Now take yourself eight blocks and place them as a wall. This wall should be one block higher than the pistons and of course you want to do this on the other side as well, all the way up. So one block above the pistons, you will have to place two more blocks on top of the pistons too. Then take your glass panes and place four pieces as a window in the front part so that you can see what happens in the farm but you still be able to collect all of the items using the hoppers because of course glass panes aren't for blocks. And then take two more blocks, place them right here and now you want to place two trapdoors right here. This will be very important because otherwise the whole zero tick mechanism won't work. Later these two trapdoors will flicker around and create some glitchiness so that this will actually work for us. Now you want to waterlock both of these trapdoors, you want to open them and then place your two pieces of kelp on top of the sand and then you can close them again. Whenever you want to access or change the inside of the farm you just have to open the trapdoors and then you can go right in. As the last step you want to go to the back of the whole farm and you want to connect these two harvesting pistons with the redstone signal. To do this you want to take some redstone torches and some blocks and you want to place a redstone torch at the side of this sticky piston. This redstone torch should turn off, then place one block above and another redstone torch right here. This one should be on and then you want to place one last block on top of this redstone torch and then place one more redstone torch at this side. This one should be off again. Now take yourself some final blocks and some pieces of redstone dust and place one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in this shape and redstone dust all on top. Why we do this with the two extending pieces right there is very simple. These two will connect to our trapdoors and we'll flicker them to get this glitchiness and to get our system to work. And of course we connect the harvesting pistons with this redstone. 
Now, if you followed everything correctly and you built the farm accurately, then everything should be finished right now and you can turn on the farm using this lever. As you can see, the kelp will always grow and the pistons harvest the kelp and as you can see, all the kelp will go through the composter and all our bone meal will be in this chest. I tested this farm a few times and came up with a rate of 18 stacks of bone meal an hour. This will be the rate that you'll get too. Also, if you don't want to risk breaking the farm, then you should always turn the farm off if you go more than 100 blocks away from the farm or when you exit the world itself. But as long as you don't do this, you can AFK right here. You can build yourself a little AFK spot and then use the farm and just leave your device on. And now here some more very important information that you have to consider when and after building this farm. First of all, this whole thing is expandable. Either you can just take the design and replicate it in the same or another chunk. Again, you have to make sure that it is within render distance so that you can work properly more on this later. Or a second method to expand it is just to expand the design itself. So don't take two of these kelp cells, but take for example four. This will result in double the amount that you gain as a bone meal from this large chest. Of course, if you want to get and obtain the kelp itself, you just have to leave out the whole composter thing. A design to just obtain the kelp would look something like this. You just have the hoppers that point towards the chest. You don't have the composter thing below. And you have some blocks right here. These are very important because we got the sand behind and otherwise this sand might glitch out. Another advantage of this design is that it will work on realms, servers and any other kind of multiplayer world and of course on the normal single player worlds it will work too. Especially on realms and servers you have to consider that it just will work when you are in a specific radius of the farm and otherwise you will have to turn the farm off to avoid breaking it. And to check what this distance is, just have to go into your world settings and then you want to scroll down to your simulation distance. In this case, we got it on four chunks, so 64 blocks. Of course, one chunk has the size 16 by 16 and four chunks have the size of 64 blocks. And this is the distance you can be in without any other risks of breaking. Out of this radius, I would just turn the farm off when leaving. Again, if it didn't work for you, then either you build it on a chunk border or you are on the Java edition of Minecraft. Of course, this will only work for Bedrock or you didn't build the farm correctly. If you have any remaining questions or something didn't work for you, you can leave everything in the comment section and I answer it to you. If you want to get in contact with me or ask me any further questions, you can do this on our Discord server as well. The link to it will be in the description as well. And again, every kind of support is appreciated. So please subscribe to this channel and leave a like if this video helped you. And then I hope we see us again in the next tutorial. See ya!